Hey guys, it's Katherine, and I'm finally back after the holidays with a new video for you guys. The video that I'm going to be doing today has been widely requested. Um, I've received so many messages on Instagram and Facebook asking for lettering videos. Um, if you already follow me on Instagram, you know that I've been working on my lettering for the past few months now, and I've actually come a really long way. Um, I'm still by no means an expert, but just recently something just kind of clicked and I really fell into the style that I had been going for. Um, and along this whole process, I've just received so much support from you guys and just a lot of requests for a lettering video. So I just really, really wanted to do that for you. So in this video, I'm going to be walking you through a uh, step-by-step how I write all of my lowercase script letters. You know, there's really no right or wrong way to do lettering. It's all a matter of your personal style. Um, you can get really creative with it, but I just had a style kind of in mind that I really wanted to achieve. And once I started looking at letters um, more like shapes rather than actual letters, if that makes sense, um, it was really a game changer for me and I was able to form letters that I had previously struggled with. So I kind of explain the shape process uh, throughout this video as well. Before I get started with this video, I just wanted to say that recently, just within the past few days, I reached a thousand subscribers and actually today I reached uh, 1,200 subscribers. So I just wanna say thank you so much for all the support. I love filming these videos and doing these tutorials and I never in a million years imagined that I would ever reach a thousand subscribers. Um, it's just still such a shock to me. So I just wanna say thank you so much because that has just completely made my day. I'm so happy that I've been able to help you guys with digital planning and uh, procreate tutorials and all that kind of stuff because I just absolutely love doing this. Um, so I just, I really appreciate it. So now that I've got the intro covered, um, I'm going to get started on the video. I hope you guys really, really enjoy it. So to get started, I'm just going to pull up Procreate and I'm going to start a new document. Okay. So the cool thing about Procreate, um, is that you can control some of your brush settings which will give you a more polished look with your lettering. This is something that, you know, you can't recreate with pen. Um, and I guess in some ways it's actually kind of cheating when it comes to lettering because you can adjust your settings in Procreate where it won't pick up the shakiness of your hand or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. For this video, I'm going to be using a brush from my Ultimate Lettering Pack. Um, it's called the Smooth Moves Brush. It's right here. It's a brush pen. And I have this available in a lettering pack that comes with 10 different brushes, or you can purchase this brush as an individual brush from Creative Market. I'll link to both sets in the video description, but you can use whatever brush pen you want. You do not have to use my brush pen in order to do any of the things that I'm doing in this video. Um, so the first thing that you're going to want to do after you select your brush is um, go into your settings. So you can do that by selecting the brush and then clicking on it again, and it'll take you to your settings. And make sure this area right here, streamlined, is turned all the way up. So now, to make things easier, I'm going to turn on my drawing guides. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go to my wrench tool, and Canvas is already selected for me, so just make sure you select Canvas, and then come down here to Drawing Guide, and turn that on, and then go to Edit Drawing Guide, and I'm going to make my grid just a little bit smaller. And now I'm going to click on Done. So I'm going to call this the fake it till you make it lettering guide because um, like I was saying, you know, you can use streamline and so it's not the same as writing with pen on paper, um, but it is a really nice way to make your letters look polished. So just because you might get beautiful results on your iPad doesn't mean you'll necessarily be there with pen and paper quite yet. I've actually been practicing with pen and paper a little bit more and I'm getting there. Um, I feel like I do a much better job on my iPad because of the streamline settings, um, but I'm hoping to get there with pen and paper as well. So what really helped me in this lettering journey just within the past few weeks, instead of looking at letters, you know, just like actual letters, I realized I needed to look at them more like shapes rather than letters. And that has helped me improve my lettering more than I can even begin to explain. Um, once I stopped thinking about the letter as a whole and started looking at things as individual shapes, everything 
just kind of came together. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna get the hang of is your upstrokes and your downstrokes. With this style of lettering, you want to press down for your downstrokes and you want to release some of that pressure for your upstrokes. So anytime you're drawing a line or doing anything where you have to come down, you press down for more pressure and then release some of that pressure when you come up. So it helps to just practice that just a little bit. Um, and you can pick up your pen if you want to. I kind of messed up there, but you get the idea. And I would just recommend practicing that a few times. Um, this actually took me a little bit to get the hang of, uh, being able to just mentally get myself in the habit of pressing down when I go down and releasing when I come up um, was a little bit hard to get used to. But honestly, what I did one night, I just wrote the word yes over and over and over again. And I probably wrote it like 200 times. And then finally, um, somewhere in between the beginning and the end of doing that, I got the hang of it. So I was just doing this all night. And you'll see, now I can't even go back to how I used to do it. But um, that is just something I would recommend. Pick a word, write it over and over again to practice your downstrokes and your upstrokes. Okay, so now I'm gonna get started with the actual letters. So let's start with A. Let me clear this layer. Okay, so now I'm gonna get started with the letter A. And the letter A, the way that I do it, is actually two different shapes. So the first shape I do like this, and then the second shape is like this. So when you're actually writing the letter, you know you wanna put those shapes together. So you would just do this shape and then this shape. And then I would just recommend doing that over and over again until you feel comfortable. Um, there's a lot of lettering guides that you can find on Pinterest that will show you, you know, how you can form these shapes and you can trace them and it's supposed to help with your muscle memory. I tried that a few times and that didn't really work for me. Some people it works really, really well for, but uh, it just didn't really work for me. I felt like you know, I could trace, but then I would try to do it on my own and I couldn't really recreate what I was tracing. So I just kind of use those for reference to look at the individual shapes and then I kind of developed my own style from there. Okay, so there's the A. So for B, that is also two different shapes, the way that I do it at least. So the first shape is kind of a loop. So I just go up and then bring it back down just like this. And then the second shape, I start at the bottom of that base and I go up, down, and then through. So now piecing it together, it's like this. And there is your B. So C's are really easy. Um, C's are pretty much just like any lowercase C, except there's a little more of a tail at the end. And C's are just one shape. So this is how I do my C's. Just like that. All right, D's, that was one letter that until recently I could not wrap my head around it. I used to do D's kind of like this, which was fine, because um, I would try to do them all, you know, as one shape, but really it's two shapes. So the first shape is kind of similar to the shape for your A, where you do this, and then the second shape you build off of this area right here, and you do a little loop and then bring it back down. And I just like that style of D better. So to put it together, um, you do your first shape right here and then pick up from right here and do the tail. That's what I call it. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but that's what I'm calling it. I really messed up the tail right there, but that's fine. Not all of your letters are going to just look 
identical, you know, like they would with a font. And that's one of my favorite things about doing them. And so even if you think one looks kind of rough, if you pair it, you know, with other letters, it might actually look kind of cool, if that makes sense. Now I'm going to do an E. An E, again, is just, you know, it's very similar to lowercase E, just standard lowercase E, um, with a little more of a tail at the end. And um, it's just really easy to do. So your E's are like this. And you can bring out that tail, you know, as far as you want. Okay, so now I'm going to start a new layer, and now I'm going to work with Fs. So Fs, um, I even made an Instagram post about this when Fs finally clicked for me because I struggled so hard with Fs. Um, I just felt like all of my Fs looked really weird. They were kind of, it's actually hard to go back to how it was before, but they were kind of like this right here, which isn't bad, but it's not what I wanted. They were like this. So I found a way to make them look pretty. And so this is how you would do it if you were starting the word with an F. Actually, if the F was in the middle of your sentence, you would still kind of do it just like this. You could switch it up just a little bit. But um, if you want the F at the beginning of your word to look really nice, it's still just one shape. And it's so much easier to do than I thought that it would be. Um, but you just start at one point and then you come up, go back down and then come through and there's your tail. So you kind of go back behind this stem right here and then come through your lower loop. And I just feel like that looks really, really nice. And I also like to leave just this little stem right here because that's something else that I feel like looks really nice um, on script Fs. So I'm just gonna practice that over and over. And I didn't leave the tail on this one, that's okay. You can come back and draw it if you want to, or you don't even have to have that little tail. And you'll see some of mine are kind of like longer and fatter than others. Um, but again, that's the cool thing about hand lettering. Um, you can write the same letter over and over again, and it's not going to look identical. Okay, so G's. Let me start with G's. G's are, again, two different shapes. Just like we did with the A and the D, we're going to draw this shape right here. And then building off of this area, you come down and do the tail just like that. So... When you put it together, it looks like this. Now it's time for H's. Um, H's were another letter that mine weren't the worst, but I really like the way that a lot of other letters were doing H's where they looked really bouncy and I just couldn't figure out how to do that because I was starting the hump on the H at the wrong part of the stem. So I'm using all these words <laughs> that I don't think they're the official words, but um, how I was doing them before is I would just draw this and then I would start here with my H. And that looks fine, you know, that looks good enough, but that's not what I really wanted. So to do the H's now where they look a little bit more bouncy, um, it's two different shapes. You draw the stem just like this, and then building off of this lower corner, just like with the B, you come up and go back down. So it makes it just look a little, I don't know, better in my opinion. So to put that together, you just go here and then start there. And it just gives it a little bit more of a bounce. So now we're going to do eyes. Um, again, just like some of the other letters, eyes are very similar to lowercase eyes, but they have a tail. So it's one shape. So all it is is this. These are probably one of the easiest letters to do. Sometimes that tail gets a little bit funky at the end, depending on the pressure of your pen, but you can always kind of fix it like I am by going over it. Just like that. Okay.
Okay, now J's, I still, for some reason, feel like I struggle with J's a little bit, but I've come a long way. Um, I don't know why I struggle with them, because um, they're actually pretty easy, but I just am never 100% happy with my J's, but especially the uppercase J's. I'm really not a big fan of uppercase script letters, but um, the lowercase J's are fine. So the J's are, again, just one shape, very similar to a lowercase J, except, you know, you come back and you cross over um, to give them a little bit of a loop. So to do a J, I just do like this. I come down and then come back across and then you can dot the top of the J just like that. Okay, so now we're on to K, and K is one of my least favorite letters, um, which is really ironic considering my name starts with a K. Um, I've always thought cursive Ks look really weird. Um, I've never liked them. Even I remember being in second grade, learning how to write in cursive and thinking, oh my gosh, cursive Ks look so weird. But, you know, even like with the really um, professional like letters and stuff like that, I just still feel like K's look really weird, but you know, they're necessary because it's a letter of the alphabet. So there's really two different ways that I've tried that I'm okay with. And I'm gonna show you just two different ways that you can do a K. So K's are either two different shapes or three different shapes, depending on the way that you choose to do it. Um, the first shape is always the same, which, is this shape that's kind of like a stem. So one of the more, I guess, formal ways that I am still kind of struggling with is one where it has kind of a loop at the top and then just a line at the bottom. So to do the loop, um, to build off of the stem, I start somewhere in this area and I just do kind of a loop like this. And I'm showing you in separate shapes so you'll see the three different shapes. And then I start about in this area and I do, I messed up, but I do um, like a little stem with a tail right there. So when you put it all together, it looks like this. Okay, so the other way to do a K um, in two different shapes rather than three, again, you'll do your stem the normal way. And then instead of having the loop, you just do like a normal lowercase K where you come in and then come back out and then do a little swoop at the end. So when you put it together, it looks like this. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to L. And L is one of my favorite letters. I've just always liked the look of L's. Like that's why hello is one of my favorite words to write because I just like the double L's. To do an L, it's one shape and you just start, you know, at whatever point, come up kind of diagonally and then come down with a tail. So do it one more time. And I do feel like this area, you know, see that looks more like an E to me. Um, this looks more like an L. I feel like the wider you make the loop, the more it looks like an E. Um, so that can be a little bit tricky, but that's just something that if you keep practicing, you can work on it. But even though I've been practicing every day for months, you know, sometimes I still make it a little too wide. But I mean, that would be a gigantic E. So you can pretty much always tell that it's an L. Okay, so now we're gonna start with M's. That was another letter <laughs> that I had kind of struggled with because I wanted it to be a little bit more bouncy. So once I switched from just making it one shape into three shapes, that really helped a lot with the bounciness. So M's are, like I was saying, three shapes. 
the way that I do them, some people do a little loop at the beginning, which I think looks nice too. I haven't done it that way yet. Um, but the way that I do them for now is I just do a straight line just like this. And I don't know if you notice that, but I'm actually using quick shapes to help me form a straight line in Procreate. So um, to use your quick shapes, all you have to do is just draw the line and then hold down once you're done drawing it. And you'll see this edit shape thing come up right here and it just straightens out the line a little bit for you. So that's another way that you're, um, like I was saying, this is kind of faking it uh, because that helps a lot, you know, with forming your lines. So that's what I do for the first stroke. The second stroke, I start on the bottom corner down here and I do kind of like a diagonal upstroke and then bring it down a little bit. And then the third shape, I start here um, on this hump right here, kind of towards the corner. And then I, again, do an upstroke and then downstroke and then um, bring it back up. And that was actually really hard to do as three separate shapes. It looks a lot better when you just do it really quickly. Um, it's not quite as wide but um, I'm gonna show you how it looks when you put it together. So you come down and then hold for the line, and then start here, come down to here, and then start here and come down to here. And see, that looks a lot cleaner than when I did it as three separate shapes. Okay, so ends are pretty similar, except it's just one hump. So um, again, for ends, I do the straight line, and then I start in the corner, and I come up, come back down, and then do a little swoop. So when you put it together, it's like this. Okay, so now O's. O's are another one of my favorite letters. Um, and for the longest time, I hated the way that my O's looked. I could not wrap my head around the O's that I was seeing people do in lettering videos. I don't know why I couldn't wrap my head around it. But once it finally clicked, it stuck. And I could never in a million years go back to doing O's the way that I used to do O's. So my O's used to kind of look like this. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. That still looks all right, but it's just not the style that I wanted. So, O's are just one shape, and they're so much easier to do than they look. So, the way that you do an O, you kind of start at the halfway point of where you want the O to be, and you just kind of draw a line down and then come back up and then bring it through. So, for some reason, it just took me forever to be able to wrap my head around that, and then once it stuck, it stuck, and I could never go back to the old style O's. So, um, I'm going to show you again really slow, and then I'll just speed through the rest of them. You come down, and then go back up, and then go through. So, down, back up, through. So, there's a bunch of O's. Um, I'm going to try to fit one more. No, that didn't fit. I know what I can do. I feel like I have to fit one more. This is my OCD kicking in um, where I have to make one more work uh, so it looks proportional. So I'm just going to move this line over a little bit, maybe up a little bit. So P's, um, that was another <laughs> letter. I feel like I've said that about so many letters, but I just was never happy with the way that I made it look. My P's were just a little bit funky. They were kind of like this. Um, which again is still all right, but the new style that I found is so much better and so much more closer to what I had in mind, and it is two different shapes. So the first shape is a straight line, just like, you know, with an M or an N, except it's longer. So then you want to start from this corner down here and then come up and then do the loop and bring it through. So when you put it together, it looks like this. And see, I just like how that looks compared to my old style, which was like this, which I was doing in one stroke. I just feel like it looks a little bit more bouncy and, you know, like it's coming down from here a little bit further. And it just looks a little bit more polished, in my opinion. But, you know, all of this stuff is completely 
subjective. So if the other way is your style, you can still do it that way in just one stroke um, and it'll still look pretty good, but this is just how I prefer to do it. This is another thing, like it's rare to kind of find these with most letters. It kind of applies to O, but it definitely applies to P, um, where this P could pass, you know, for lowercase or uppercase. Okay, so Q, Q is two shapes as well, and it is very, very similar to a normal lowercase Q. So the first shape is this shape again. This is the shape we use in quite a few letters. And then the second shape you wanna meet right here and then come down and then do a little sweep. And then I just kinda of like, you know, similar to the F, um, I like to do this little line through the hoop. So um, I'm gonna show you one more time. I deleted that because it was just, it was kind of attached to this letter and I wanna do this as two separate shapes. So um, I'm gonna come down, do a hoop, and then bring the line back through. So then when you place it together, um, you do your first shape and then your second shape. Okay, so now R's. Um, R's are really, really easy to do. The only thing that I struggle with still with R's is sometimes connecting them to other letters when I'm writing words. Um, and if you guys like this video, I will get more into letter connections in another video. So uh, make sure you give a thumbs up or a comment um, or reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram if you found this video helpful. And I'll make sure to do the letter connections uh, video so I can talk more about connecting R's because that... <laughs> Um, it doesn't seem like it would be really hard, but it is. It's, um, at least it is for me. I don't know if it is for everybody, but it is for me. But R's on their own or when they start a word are very, very easy to do. And you can do it as one shape or two shapes and they look very similar. Um, so I'm going to show you as one shape first and then I'll show you as two shapes. So as one shape, all you have to do is kind of come up, form a loop, and then bring it back down. And then just do that over and over. Okay, so when you do it as two shapes, the first shape is this. You come up, hoop, and then stop right there. And then your second shape is where you meet right here and you bring it down. And that's how I've been doing it a lot lately. Instead of as one shape, um, I just do it like this. When you piece it together, it looks like this. And see, they look really similar, but doing it this way, it um, gives it a little bit more of an edge right here. I just had to correct where I kind of left a gap right there. Um, but see, they look so similar. So really either way works. Okay, so S is, that is another letter where you can do it two different ways. This is one, though, the two different ways, they look entirely different. So one way is two shapes, and then the other way is just one shape. Um, the first way, this is my preferred way, is the two shape method, um, which is where you do a shape, you come up, you bring it up. So it's similar to this. And then using the second shape, you meet right here, and then you come down and then through. So when you piece it together, it looks like this. Okay, so that's the first S. The second S, um, that is just one shape, is similar to a lowercase s, but it's, again, with, you know, a little bit of a hoop that you bring back around so it can attach to other letters. So that way, um, you just draw kind of like a normal S, but then at the end, you bring this part back around and through the S, so it looks like this.
Okay, so now moving on to tees. Um, tees are super simple. Um, this is how I do them. There's actually a lot of different ways to do them, but this is just how I do them 100% of the time. It's two shapes, you know, because you have to draw a line through the tee. So, um, they're very similar to a certain style of lowercase t as well, which makes them even easier to do. Um, but all you do is you start at the top and then bring it down and back up. And then um, you draw your line. So you can draw your line through it either like this, or you can do a fancier line kind of like this. That's what I'm gonna do um, just for this guide, but you can draw that line however you want. So there actually is another way to do the T2, which I decided I am going to show you. I didn't think I was going to show it at first. Uh, but, you know, if the T is what you're starting your word with and you want a little bit of like a tail on the end of it, um, it's actually a three shape situation. So to do that, you would start kind of towards the bottom of where you want your T and then come up and then kind of going a little bit above where that starts then you would come back down. Oh, my pen messed up. Okay, so then you would come back down and do a normal T, and then you would do your line through both of them. So um, it would kind of look like this when you put it all together. Okay, so U's are, once again, very similar to lowercase U's, and I do them in two different shapes. I do just a normal U shape like this, and then I do a little tail. So, I start, you know, around this area, and then I come back down for the tail. So, when you put it together, it looks like this. Okay, so V's are a little bit tricky to me, not on their own, but it's again one of those letters that is a little bit hard for me to connect for some reason. So the way that I normally do V's is just as one shape because that's what's easier for me. Um, luckily V's, you know, they're not the most common letters, so they're not like in tons of different words. I mean, <laughs> so um, I don't really feel like I have to struggle with it a lot, but this is how I do my V's. I just do it like a normal lowercase v and then just add a little swoop on the end all in one stroke. So I come down, come back up, and then do a little swoop. Okay, so W's are, once again, very easy. And um, once again, though, kind of hard for me to connect at this point in my lettering journey. Um, but I'll show you how I do them. I do them in two different shapes. Um, so the first shape I do like this. And then the second shape, I kind of start a little bit above that, but kind of come down on top of it and do like this. So kind of, I give it kind of like a swoop, you know, just like I do the V's. So when you put it together, it looks like this. We're on the final three letters. Um, so X's, I hate X's. I hate doing X's. <laughs> um, I just really, really don't like doing X's. I cannot find a way to make X's fancy. And it's just, you know, you just got to do them sometimes. But the way that I do them, I do two different shapes. I do kind of like a little swoop shape. Um, going this way. So I just like bring this down and then come back up like this. And then I just do a diagonal line through it. Um, and they don't look super fancy, but they get the job done. So when I put them together, it looks like this.
this is one of those things you can probably find more creative X's, you know, in those lettering guides that are on Pinterest. Um, they probably have a better way to do an X. This is just how I feel the most comfortable doing my script X's for the time being. Um, but luckily, you know, this is once again, not a letter that's in a lot of different words. And every time I have to write a word where it's in there, I'm like, oh man. Okay, so Y's, it's two different shapes. So the first shape is kind of like a U, um, where you start at the top and then bring it back down and back up a little bit. And then you come down on top of this to do your tail. So uh, the second shape would be like this. And then when you put it together, it looks like this. Usually though, with Y's, I do come in here and kind of make them a little bit more smooth just in this area. I'm really butchering it right now, of course, that I'm trying to show it off, but normally it's pretty easy to kind of clean that area up a little bit. Okay, so Z's, um, I hate Z's. <laughs> I hate writing Z's. Thankfully, they're not common letters. Um, anytime I see a lowercase script or cursive Z, or not anytime I see one, but anytime I try to write one, I think of that scene in Billy Madison. Um, if you've seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about, but that's how I feel when I'm trying to write Z's. So the way that I do Z's is very similar to the lowercase cursive Z. It's actually just like the lowercase cursive Z because that's all I know how to do. Um, so I do it in two different shapes and the first shape, it's going to be really hard to do them separately. I can't even wrap my mind around doing it separately, but the first shape is kind of like this. And then the second shape, I kind of pick up off of that and do like this. So when you put it together, it looks like this and see why it makes me think of the Billy Madison scene, because that looks it almost looks like a fake letter, but it's a Z. That's how I do my Zs, you know, and when it comes down to it, all of this is creative stuff. It's creative lettering, so there's no right or wrong way to do it, uh, but that's just the best way I can figure out how to do a Z, and I usually do have to touch up this little area right here. And I got progressively bigger with those for some reason, but that is how they're done. And again, I, that's the letter that I probably practice the least out of all of these. So that's probably why they're kind of all over the place right there. I'm going to touch up some of these Y's. Okay, so that's it. Um, that's how I do my script letters for the time being. Like I was saying, I've received so many requests for these lettering videos. Like I've received at least 50 within the past couple of months on Instagram and then a few on Facebook. So I really hope that you guys find this video helpful. I did the best that I knew how with explaining how I've started drawing out my letters. Um, but the biggest thing is to just start looking at the letters more like shapes rather than the letter as a whole, because that will help you come such a long way with your lettering. Also, if you want to download everything that I just wrote out so you can kind of trace it, if that's a method that works for you, I will um, put this Procreate file on my website for free, and I'll link to that in the video description, and that way you can just download this straight into Procreate and kind of trace over some of the shapes that I've done so you can practice your lettering um, if my style is something that you're interested in. So that's it. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel uh, for more digital planning tutorials. I do digital plan with new videos and I'm very happy to do more lettering videos if that is something that you guys are interested in. But just make sure you let me know some way, whether it's in the comments um, or sending me a message or whatever. And I would love to do more lettering videos for you guys. Make sure you check out my website, naptimealt.com for tons of planner related freebies that you can download now. Thanks.